Welcome back, everybody. It is 8.30 on a Wednesday morning. Live look at the Capitol Dome today. Casey Kasem had one of the most recognized voices in the world. And the countdown begins. Number 40. Casey, could you please play Waiting for a Girl Like You from Mark to Barb so she knows she's worth the wait. So if you didn't know him from American Top 40, you probably heard Casey Kasem's voice as the voice of Shane on Scooby-Doo cartoons. He had a prolific broadcasting and charitable career, but his final years were clouded by a family fight that pitted the eldest children against their stepmother. It's a fight that continues in the courts to this day. Carrie Kasem is the daughter of Casey Kasem, and she's in town to MC an event for Youth for Human Rights. She is also lobbying states to adopt laws to prevent family estrangement, among other things. And good morning. We're so happy you're with us Thank today. you for having me. Yes. Listening to that, it takes me right back to, uh, you know, my youth and being a young adult and enjoying your father for many years. Thank you. For yes. many years. Did you ever think, let's just jump right in, that you would ever become this advocate for uh, against elder abuse and estrangement? Never. I didn't, I never thought, I mean, I'm a syndicated radio host, I'm a talk radio host. I was doing TV and, and hosting and thinking that's where my life was going. And, you know, all of a sudden I can't see my dad. And I start getting letters and emails and, and social media. People are saying, I, I, this is happening to me too. Mm. I, I didn't think that, you know, I, I had no idea this was going on in anybody else's family. Mm -hmm. And so going through the fight and realizing that once you turn 18, you have absolutely no rights to see your parents in this country. None. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Zero. And so that led to the foundation um, of the Kasem Cares Foundation? It did. Okay. I, I created a nonprofit, Kasem Cares, and the Kasem Coalition uh, uh, for lobbying purposes. And I just uh, created legislation with my stepdad, with my lawyer, Troy Martin, and Assemblyman Mike Gatto in California. And I said, well, I'm not going to stop just at California. You know, uh, I'm going to go and, and do all 50 states and hopefully federally. Maryland is one of the states of 13, I believe, that have adopted legislation. Just passed two days ago. Just passed. Congratulations Thank for you. that. Thank but, you. Okay, so exactly what does the foundation look to stop? Because we talked about estrangement, but we all saw it play out the press um, right. that your father's health allegedly was failing and you weren't able to be in touch with him. Tell us how it how it played out, but more importantly, how it helps others. Well, what, what the legislation does is just allow a judge to rule on visitation without going through an entire fight over guardianship or power of attorney, which can cost well, in California hundreds of thousands of dollars. Most people don't have enough money for a, re a retainer for a lawyer. Right. So you can go in and ask a judge. And the evidence now is placed on the person who is not allowing visitation. Mm -hmm. And it can't be hearsay. Oh, these kids are bad. Oh, these kids just want money. Oh, these kids upset the person. No, where's the evidence? Right. And so that's, it, it's that. It's also if someone dies uh, where they're buried, if, if, the, if the parent is sick uh, and they're in the hospital, then the caretaker must tell the family. Well, so with your personal story and your stepmother, uh, Jean, your personal story is you were not involved in any uh, decisions like that with your father. Is that where you found yourself? Oh, well, we were, no, no, we were completely blocked. Completely so, and blocked. it wasn't just us kids. It was all of his friends, all of his family members, his brother. W nobody could get through. His mm -hmm. phone was given away. His staff was fired. Uh, he was not allowed. His driver was not allowed to take him anymore because he couldn't drive. So he had somebody helping him. Uh, was told not to drive him over to uh, see us anymore. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't get in. And when you tried to knock on, on the door or anything, you know, the police were called. And there's nothing they can do. If, if someone's in a residential home and there's, a person blocking that door saying, I live here, I don't want them in here. Right. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Um, Carrie, what happened in the end? Were you able to see your father before he passed? I won an impossible fight. I won a fight that every single person, including my own lawyers, told me I would never win. I won guardianship over my father. Mm -hmm. His human rights were violated. And this is why I work so hard with Youth for Human Rights. I have, this is my, it's a, just a pamphlet. Mm -hmm. Anybody can call or, or, or go on to youthforhumanrights.org and for free, absolutely, I'm not paid, right. um, get a booklet, all 30 human rights. And just know your human rights. Mm -hmm. Because if you know your human rights, you can change the world. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt uh, made these rights for every single country, not just ours, but most people can't even name one human right. Mm -hmm. 
but how powerful would it be if we actually took these human rights seriously? You're st we said it briefly, um, you're still in a legal battle, that legal battle um, from what I read more so over trust. So let me ask you, what did you say, what do you say to the critics who say, oh, they just want his money? You know, it, it, I, we've never asked for money for five years. Mm -hmm. She went after ours. My dad left us a trust. She came after that trust. She went after that trust before he died. She's the one after money. We want her in jail. They, they wouldn't prosecute her, so we're going civilly. It's, you know, it's, it, so it continues. It continues. We have a wrongful death suit, and hopefully it will, uh, we will be going to trial very soon. Uh, there's not one person that has not come out who was one of my dad's friends, um, a family member, who hasn't come out and mm -hmm. said, we support you. We will be there. Here's my testimony. And it's overwhelming. It's, you, there's so... There's so much evidence and so many people who've come forward that we don't even have to take the stand. We just let them talk. We let them talk about the abuse. We have to let you go, Carrie. But for those who are watching and they say, you know, not to this magnitude, not these national headlines, but we're in this as well, how can they get in touch? What should they do? I have a hotline. It's caseandcares.org. So if you are unable to see your parent, if you're being blocked, please call us. We have legislation in certain states, but we also have the Bill of Rights. Um, it's, a, it's a bill that can allow you to see your parents if they're in a hospital or in a nursing home. So please go to caseandcares.org and we can help. Things you never thought you would be involved with or think about it until you get to that point. Sorry, sorry that uh, we met you this way. Thank you for being in Washington. Thank you Good so luck. much. Summit. Carrie Kasem is the founder of Kasem Cares Foundation. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tucker over.